Imagine, if you will, you're at Disney having a wonderful time. You go on this ride called the Haunted Mansion. It's a really cool ride, it's spooky, but not too scary for children. You're having a blast, the ride reaches its climax, a huge graveyard full of ghosts. A party, and you are enjoying yourself just as much as the spirits are, when suddenly... <coughs> this guy pops out, you smash your knee against the metal bar of the doom buggy, bruising your knee and ruining the rest of your day. This is, of course, merely hypothetical. This didn't happen to me, but you know, I did have a similar experience. When I was but a young boy, I refused to go on the Haunted Mansion. Ghosts are scary. So I get dragged on it and close my eyes for the entire duration, except I open my eyes briefly during the graveyard scene and I see... And then I smash my knee on the metal bar and my day is ruined. Hello guys, welcome to this Haunted Mansion hot take. I'm Ross Pitt, Shark Hunter. Look, I love the Haunted Mansion, but what I'm talking about today is nothing short of a tragedy. The Haunted Mansion is full of creepy, spooky ghosts who just want a party, brought to life <laughs> with brilliant spectacles, most of which is still impressive more than 50 years after it first opened. But these little a-holes, I hate them. Alright, so back in the day, we had what was called a carnival. And in these carnivals, we had things called ghost houses. Or haunted houses. Or whatever. And a common occurrence among those was a pop-up ghost head, giving riders a sudden jolt and scare, if you will. Now, telling you that, you might be like, oh, well, it makes sense, paying tribute to what came before them. And to that I say, I don't care. I don't care if these guys are a tribute to the haunted house attractions of the past, or maybe even to the most emotional thing to ever come out of some random guy's life. I can't stand them. The problem with these guys is that while they might be the biggest shock you ever experience in the Haunted Mansion, they are quite possibly the cheapest scare in it. We all know about jump scares. They are just about the laziest way to draw up fear in the audience. Now, I'm not some lame -o who hates jump scares because wah wah. In fact, there are some really great ones out there. I actually have two great examples, in fact. One is from the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise which usually builds itself on dumb jump scares, but this one from Sister Location is actually pretty cool. Great, now carefully locate and press the button next to Freddy's right eye. Great, now carefully locate and press the button just above Freddy's nose. This one does a solid job of building tension, and since we know jump scares mean death in this game, we are on edge, so when a jump scare gives us a start like this but doesn't kill us, as well as advancing the story and gameplay, it's a really solid way of freaking us out. But that one is nothing compared to the one from The Haunting of Hill House. You know the- This is easily my favorite jump scare to ever happen in anything ever. Of all time. The scene is already built with such tension from the two sisters, and then the third comes out, scaring the ever-loving shit out of us, and moving the story along in the process, as well as giving my favorite character the best performance in the series. Take that, baby actor, you're nothing compared to a fully trained adult, and you should feel bad. This scene even has a deeper meaning later on, when you realize why it happened, when it happened. It's not some cat going boogity doogity, it serves a deeper purpose in the story and characters while being unexpected and driving heh, the plot forward. Weirdly enough, both of these ones don't even have a musical sting to them, which is kind of a staple of the jump scare trope, and I think that might actually help with them. But in the Haunted Mansion, we don't really have much in terms of plot, so this scare doesn't add much aside from something we already know, which is these ghosts are out to have fun by scaring a little, which is fine. But it fails at developing them at all because, well, it's a theme park ride. Not much development you can do. But still, every other happy haunt in the attraction is full of character, right down to the paintings. Hell, right down to this wobbly tombstone. Gets a whole thing. But these pop-up ghosts don't really have much. I can say, in the attic, they actually did have a bit more character, specifically when the 1995 refurbishment came out, with them shouting their I do's to the bride the last words they ever said alive. Okay, I don't actually know if those were their last words. I doubt they croaked at the altar, but still. Am I supposed to assume the beating heart bride also killed her grooms? 
whatever. But in the 2006 refurbishment, they were thrown away for the much better attic storyline now. Yeah, I said it, fight me old attic stands. You can still see the old attic in Tokyo though. So, since the attic pop-ups don't exist anymore in America, we can only talk about the graveyard ghosts who do even less and have so much less character. As I said, every other character of the mansion you kind of get through well-crafted design and also your ability to focus on them. Even if you miss other ghosts, you can still focus on a select few each ride through. I would recommend the dog in the background, right there. Their genius design tells a story and about their characters. For example, the king and queen on a teeter-totter. I mean, it's just obvious the symbolism is staring you right in the face. And you kind of get that with the pop-ups. They are ghosts who love to scare unsuspecting visitors, but their designs don't reflect that. This one is just a grandma. Grandmas don't jump scare. Why, grandma? But their designs, unlike her, just aren't scary. They're just kind of unnerving at best. And when their gimmick is to scare, I think that's kind of a problem. Even if they were scary, they don't show up for a long enough period of time to actually creep us out. They make us jump because they jump. They could be wearing bunny ears and we wouldn't register it just as easily. They don't even do what they're trying to do properly. They're supposed to be unexpected. A big old shock to the system, you know? Get that blood pumping. We haven't really had any encounters quite like this in the mansion. We have never been jump scared, so it makes sense to give us a taste of that scary nonsense, but it doesn't work because we can already see them before they pop out. It's not that difficult to expect these guys to boogity doogity you once you see them creeping behind the tombstone. And I would hazard a guess to say not just for the fans of the ride already. Sure, this works for kids, but we as responsible adults aren't so easy to startle. Hell, Tigger does a better job of this, and that's a baby ride. Don't take that as an attack on the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. It's a, it's a really good ride. But hey... Who could forget this brilliant cast of characters, according to the wiki, such as Leering Skull, Winky Skull, The Old Hag, Droopy Eyes, The blast -up. What? The blast -up? Seriously? He's just named after his function. It's like calling these guys the Pepper's Ghosts. And yeah, I know, there is literally a ghost called the Hatbox Ghost, just let me rant. Now. In other pieces of lore, such as the Ghost Gallery, they have had proper names, but that's not canon and I refuse to believe it is. There is also a theory, or maybe the wiki is pulling my leg, I don't know, that one of them is Willy the Wisp from the old radio ads for the mansion, who loved to pop out and scare mortals. Wait a minute. Willy? That's another name for penis. This park has children in it. That's it, I have to put my foot down. This is where you've crossed the line, Disney. This charade has gone on long enough. I don't care if you think that it's pointless to complain about this. We as Mansion fans deserve better. I demand change immediately. No more pop-up ghosts in the Haunted Mansion, or else I and many others who are completely rational will boycott this attraction. We will march up the streets demanding change. Soon every house in America will understand and sign our petition to bring the mansion to its glory days. Days without super scary ghosts that go boogity doogity. This is what we need as Americans. So after that extremely well laid out critique, you would be thinking that I dislike the pop-up ghosts. Yeah, I do. Actually, I kind of hate them. The mansion is a ride with integrity. It's honestly one of the best theme park rides around. It is intelligent in ways I can't even begin to describe. There is just a subtlety to the attraction that makes it feel alive, <laughs> when all others just kind of don't. The way it spins its narrative, the history in every nook and cranny, the design of it all, it's honestly stepping into an entire art piece, a type of art that needs to be explored more. Almost everything a about it feels right in a way, except for the pop-ups. I can appreciate that they are nods to attractions long past, but fit they do not. Despite my exaggeration earlier, they don't actually harm the mansion in any meaningful way, or really any way at all. I haven't seen anybody else actually dislike these guys, so if it's just me, I suppose it would be unfair to deprive everyone else of their boogity-doogities. So if you enjoy them, fair enough. Just know that 
I am right and you are wrong. It's just how it is. Have a humdinger ringer of a day, y'all. And if you wouldn't mind, could you like and subscribe? And if you liked it, maybe you want to see more similar stuff to the future. Uh, just tell me. It, it'll be a lot less negative, probably. And definitely more organized. I do love talking about Disney theme parks, but never really had the motivation to do anything with them until now. But hey, if you did subscribe, could you maybe hit that bell in case I do more stuff like this? I don't know. It sounds fun. I had a good time making this. But hey, maybe you like reading or My Little Pony fan fictions or whatever. I mean, you don't need to. Maybe you just like, I don't know, two friends checking out a story and bonding together. If you do, maybe you'd like my podcast, Ross and Wizzy's Fan Fiction Power Hour. We have a lot of fun over there and we could really use more, you know, people checking it out. Truth be told, maybe I should have made a Disney theme park, like, podcast. Unfortunately, that ain't in the freaking budget now, so that is a darn shame. Oh well. If you want to check that out, go down into the description. Otherwise, like, subscribe, comment down below, I don't know, uh, freaking ring that bell thing, whatever it is. Or just go to Taco Bell if you want two options either ring that bell or go to taco bell so yeah one's worse than the other so you might as well <laughs>